Well, Richard, you said we needed general revelation to interpret special revelation, but isn't that what liberal theologians do? Uh, yep, that's exactly what they do. Um, I guess you could, you could think about it that way and just sort of say that would be a dead wrong thing to do. I mean, the fact is, is that what liberal, what we call liberal Christians, let's just put it that way, for lack of a better term, what they tend to do is they take things from science and archaeology and even philosophy and things like that, which are aspects of general revelation, and they, and they read the Bible in the light of that. Right. And so they say, you know, well, we can only believe the Bible so far as it passes those tests. And what, what they're in effect doing is they're taking their understanding of general revelation and putting it on top of the Bible. That's really what they're doing. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is, is that the revelation of God in the Bible and the revelation of God in everything else work together. And actually, they work together perfectly because God's revelation in both sides are from Him. And because of the character of God Himself, they, they are harmonious. Now, the problem is, is that they don't always look harmonious to us. I mean, what the Bible says and what science says ought to fit. If the Bible really is God's Word and if we're knowing science correctly, they ought to fit. What the Bible says and what philosophy says, they ought to fit if they're both saying the true thing. Right. And um, the same thing would be true of any experience we have of the world. They ought to fit if the Bible is true and if we're getting the right vision of general revelation. But the problem is this. We never deal with the Bible itself and general revelation itself. We never get to that pure. You, don't, you never get to that in itselfness. Instead, what you've got is a wrapping around these two things. Uh, we have a wrapping around the Bible. And that wrapping around the Bible is our understanding of the Bible. Now, is your understanding of the Bible as perfect as the Bible? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so your understanding of the Bible is different from the Bible itself. And our, now here's general revelation in and of itself, God speaking through everything. But it has a wrapping around it, too, that we deal with. We don't get to that thing. We get to the wrapping. And that means, in other words, we're dealing with our interpretation of the world around us, too. Now, have you ever made a mistake? Of course. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> you ever lost your keys, things like that? Um, you know, turned in the wrong lane in the car? Uh, that's the wrapping around general revelation. So, we're not dealing with the things themselves. They do match up. But what we're actually dealing with is the wrapping around it, our interpretations around these two things. The unfortunate thing is that liberals often have the attitude of, I'm understanding this correctly. I've got it right, and I'm understanding the Bible correctly. I've got it right. Now, they disagree. Now, what I'm going to do is force my vision of what the world around me says onto it, okay, and critique the Bible that way. And they forget that they're really just living with the wrappings. They're living with their understanding of the world around them and their understanding of the Bible around them. Take archaeology, for example. Archaeology is not a pure science. It's an interpretation of facts and data by schemes and by philosophies and by different approaches. That's why archaeologists differ with each other. They, you can't get two archaeologists to agree on six things, and that's because they're always interpreting the facts. Well, if you're interpreting the facts of archaeology and you're interpreting the Bible too, the reason conflict comes up is for at least three different reasons. One, we've misunderstood the facts. Or, we've misunderstood the Bible. That happens a lot, both of those. Or, we've misunderstood both. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, those are three different possibilities there, that I've misunderstood the facts of archaeology, or I misunderstood the Bible, or I've misunderstood both, and that's why they don't seem compatible. And for the most part, what we can discover is that um, sometimes our understanding of archaeology, just taking that as an example, can actually help us understand the Bible better. It's not to discredit the Bible, it's to help us understand the Bible better. And, it's, and archaeology can help us, and science can help us, and all kinds of things can help us so long as they're used in submission to the Bible. Now, there is a fourth possibility when apparent conflicts come up, and sometimes we have to just admit this, and that is that we may never know how to reconcile science, general revelation, and special revelation. We may be running into a mystery. And one of the greatest mysteries in the Bible, of course, is the Trinity, or even go beyond that, how Jesus can be fully divine and fully human. Mm -hmm. 
Now, science, I think, most scientists, I think, would tell us that's not possible. It's not possible for someone to be fully God and fully man, two natures that don't mix together and don't change and don't form composition or anything like that in one person. But that's what we believe Jesus is, fully divine, fully human. Now, anytime you take something that's as mysterious as that from the Bible and you, and you bring it to science, science is going to collapse because they have no way of handling that. So sometimes these apparent differences between special and general revelation are the fact that we're running into something that's beyond human comprehension. So there really are these four things. We could be wrong about general revelation. We could be wrong about the Bible. We could be wrong about both. Or we could be bumping into a mystery that we just can't fathom. And I think one of the most helpful ways then to, to distinguish between what we mean usually when we say a liberal and a conservative Christian is this. It's the practical issue. It's the propensity we have of on which understanding are we going to lean. When, there, when there's a, an apparent conflict and we can't resolve it quickly, where are we going to stand? Are we going to tend to stand on our understanding of general revelation? Or are we going to tend to stand on our understanding of special revelation? the Bible, and knowing that we might have to change that later on, but is that where we're going to stand today, our interpretation? Um, the more liberal Christians tend to stand more on their understanding of general revelation, science, philosophy, logic, those kinds of things. The more conservative you are, the more you tend to hold on to your understanding of the Bible. Now, that's not a choice of holding the Bible versus general revelation. Right. It's just holding on to my understanding at this moment of what the Bible says. I mean, let's face it. There have been all kinds of things that Christians have believed that, about, that the Bible teaches that have been proven wrong. But it took general revelation to push us to the point that we could begin to see that we had mishandled the Bible. Right. Can you think of an example of such a thing as that? Uh, the earth being flat would be one. All right, the earth being flat is the obvious one, right? Or a geocentric. Yeah, a geocentric system. system. Yeah, exactly. See, it, it, I mean, it was obvious, it seemed, early on that, that the earth is flat. And anytime you read the Bible with that in mind, it looks like the Bible is affirming that. Now, how do you know that the earth is not flat? <laughs> We've gone to space. All right, good. You can look at a picture of it now, right? I mean, it is so sure you can take a photograph of the thing now. All right. All right, just go up in the space shuttle and take a movie. It's not that hard. Right. Okay. So our tendency then is not to throw the Bible out because of that, but to let general revelation with its weightiness, in this case, help us reinterpret the Bible. And so we say things like, well, the Bible's not trying to give a scientific description of the world. It's describing the world as it appeared to them. Okay, so we call that a phenomenological understanding of the world and expression of the world. All right, so that's good. Now, a lot of Christians would tell us these days that we should do the same thing with evolution, that, that, that everybody comes from the same species, the origin of the species, that we all come from one living thing, okay? Um, what would you say about that? Is that different from what we find in the roundness of the earth? Well, as our interpretation now stands as we hold the scripture, I do think there would be a difference there. Yeah, why? What would be the difference? Well, I mean, God creates species, generally speaking, separately mm -hmm. uh, unto themselves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as a common origin, that can be negated. That's right. And do you, do you have a photograph of the common origin? Uh, do not. No. We, do we have a video of the origins of the world and how the different species developed? We don't, okay? It's, it's still very theoretical. And for this reason, rather weak. You see what I'm saying? Right. Even if one day it were proven to be true, at this stage it is not proven to be true. Right. Not like the roundness of the earth. Okay, so as a, if you were a more liberal Christian, what you would say is, well, I don't need much evidence from general revelation. I've got enough, so now I'm going to reinterpret the Bible. Mm -hmm. But as a more conservative Christian, what you say is, uh-uh, I have to have a lot of weight. There's a heavy burden of proof on the scientist to make me change what, I, what the church has always believed the Bible has said. And so we have to wait for that. Now, I personally don't believe in theistic evolution. I don't believe in a common origin of the species. I can understand why some true believers could, 
But I think there's a heavy burden of proof on their side that they need, to, this is not an obvious thing, not like right. the roundness of the earth. And there's the difference, see. The weight of evidence has to be very heavy when it comes to general revelation, influencing our interpretation of the scriptures.